we love what the Word of God tells us about Christ and God and the, and the Holy Spirit. And so we want to be faithful to the Scriptures. And uh, these men, uh, in their character and their Bible knowledge and their theology, uh, they've been uh, tested and examined. And they prayed through this, and we as elders have prayed through this. We've uh, interviewed each one. Uh, this has been a very significant process in the life of our church, and, and we don't take this lightly. And so this is a very significant event in the life of our church. And so I ask you men these questions, um, and so just re uh, respond in the affirmative, and then there's a question for you as a congregation, and I will ask you to stand at that time uh, if you would agree with that question. Uh, first of all, do you believe the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as originally given to be the inerrant word of God, the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the confession of faith and the catechisms of this church as containing the system of doctrine taught in the Holy Scriptures? And do you further promise that if at any time you find yourself out of accord, with any of the fundamentals of this system of doctrine, you will, on your own initiative, make known to your session the change which has taken place in your views since the assumption of this ordination vow, do you? Uh, do you approve the form of government and discipline of the Presbyterian Church in America in conformity with the general principles of biblical polity, do you? Do you accept the office of ruling elder in this church and promise faithfully to perform all the duties thereof and to endeavor by the grace of God to adorn the profession of the gospel in your life and to set a worthy example before the church of which God has made you an officer, do you? Do you promise subjection to your brethren in the Lord, do you? Do you promise to strive for the purity, peace, unity, and edification of the church? Do you? And then to you as the members of Peace Presbyterian Church, do you, the members of this church, acknowledge and receive these brothers as ruling elders? And do you promise to yield to them all that honor, encouragement, and obedience in the Lord to which his office, according to the word of God and the constitution of this church, entitles him. Do you? Please stand. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's pray together. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, by your good order in the church and by the Holy Spirit, we set apart uh, Tim McDonald and thank you for him. We thank you for his uh, call and service to us until now as a deacon and uh, pray you would bless him now as we set him apart to serve us in the office of overseer. Would you uh, clothe him with power? Would you give him great tenderness and fearlessness that can only come from you, the Holy Spirit? We pray your blessing on his ministry in Jesus' name. And Father God, we pray that same thing for Ralph as he comes to be ordained as an elder here. Lord, thank you for his service in a different denomination in the past. And Father, we pray that you'll bless him as he serves here at Peace Church. And we pray too for his wife, Veronica. We pray that as a couple, that they will uh, be of great service to you. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them that you would protect them from the attacks of the evil one and do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that you have brought Bill Stern to this point in his walk with you, that he is uh, willing and able to lay down his life for you in service and following the Great Shepherd. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, honor his heart, desire to serve you by and empowering him with your Holy Spirit to be the elder that you would have him be. Help him to see that being a leader means laying his life down for the sheep. And we pray that you would protect him, Teresa and Beth, by your Holy Spirit from attacks of the evil one, that they can be strong in their faith and that 
they would show your love through their uh, love for the believers here at Peace. Lord, we thank you for the gift of these men. We pray that you would equip them powerfully, Lord, to serve and govern this church. Lord, we thank you for Ron, Ralph, Joe, Bill, Tim, Bill, Chris, Rick, and Aaron, Lord. Um, I pray that you would help them to uh, manage their time well. I pray that um, as they serve the church, that they would continue to serve their family, that there wouldn't be a tension there. Uh, I pray for um, their work to be joyful, Lord. Um, I pray that serving the church wouldn't be a burden to them, Lord, and that in those times that are difficult, Lord, that you would lift them up and encourage them. And Lord, I, all of us officers, we're, we're under attack from Satan, from culture, and at times it can be difficult to withstand those attacks. But Lord, I pray that you would uh, give an extra measure to these men, that you would encourage them by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this church. Continue to use your officers to govern well, Lord, and help us all of us to, uh, to serve as your representatives, um, to, to love the church as Christ loves the church, Father. And it's by your Son's name, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, normally at this time, all the elders, uh, we all welcome these men. We extend to them the right hand of fellowship in the ministry that uh, we're all a part of. Uh, we're not able to do that because of just where we're at. And so I now pronounce and declare that these men have been regularly elected, ordained, and installed as ruling elders in this church, agreeable to the word of God and according to the constitution of the Presbyterian Church in America, and that as such, they are entitled to all the encouragement, honor, and obedience in the Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God Almighty be on you men all the days of your life and service. Amen. And so at this time, um, I'll let you guys go and sit down. And then Ken Langley is going to come forward, and he's going to give a brief charge to them and to us as a, as a church. Well, this is an exciting day for our church to receive and ordain officers, and so uh, I want to offer three points. Uh, this will be brief. This is your second sermon of the day, but it will be brief, I promise. I'm going to say two things to our new officers and to our officers in general, and then one thing to our congregation. So first of all, you, you men who are called to this office of, of elder and, and these offices of elder and deacon, Paul says in 1, Corinthians, 1 Timothy 3, if anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. It is not lightly that you accept this call and that you are aware of this call. And deacons, likewise, will gain, Paul says, great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus in 1 Timothy 3. So those are some, some, uh, some uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word. Those are some, some explanations that Paul gives to the, the officers that it's not something that is lightly chosen. Um, God, God has placed a heavy burden on their lives to, to be leaders in this church. But secondly, uh, your labor is for the glory of God in the church. And so uh, Paul says so in, in Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That's another just reminder that the work that we do uh, as officers in the church brings great glory to God when we do it his way. And finally, to you, uh, you folks in the congregation, um, we want to encourage and support and respect the authority of these officers, and we do it out of love and reverence for Christ. And Hebrews 13, verse 7 reminds us of this. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. 